All right, so Antoine, uh, what are we looking at here? So we have our model chimney here, and I'll run you guys down from the top to the bottom, basically, and we'll cover what the different things are, how some of them need repair, and how much they'll cost. So at the top here, you'll notice this piece here. This is a chimney lining top cap. So if you don't have a chimney liner, it's probably not gonna be round. It will most likely be square, and it'll have a little netted cage around it. You might not be able to see because it's underneath this uh, smooth part, but it's got a metal cage, and it stops any animals from getting inside the chimney. When it's cold out, you have raccoons and whatnot, they get, you know, there's warmth coming out of the chimney, they're cold, they fly up here or sit up here to get warm, they become asphyxiated from the carbon monoxide, and then they fall inside, and toast is toast. So, um, and then, you know, you might need a chimney cleaning because your units don't draft properly. And there's a blockage or something happens where the furnace then, they have what's called a barometric damper. So anything that comes back into the pipe the wrong way, it'll cut the unit off. Hot water heaters don't have that, while they're more of a health and safety hazard than a furnace because the furnace will shut itself off but the hot water here won't. Um, so you have a chimney cap on the top there and that's what that does. These are your terracotta flues that I was talking about earlier in the segment um, and they are two foot pieces that are stacked on top of each other with a cement joint in between and this holds all of the carbon monoxide inside the chamber and doesn't allow it to leak outside or into the home. So uh, that's what these are. And do, do mm -hmm. all homes have that uh, terracotta feet? Or that, this thing that you just mentioned? Sure, yeah. So not all homes do. Like if you have a very old home, chances are probably not gonna have a terracotta flu. Let's say your 1800s home, okay. right? So not gonna have a terracotta flu. It's probably all masonry inside. Um, homes that are built in the 1900s, uh, newer building code, right? They all have this as standard. So when they build the home, they don't know what size units are going to be in there, but they know that basically these two cavity sizes carry the most light probable BTU range. So okay. that's good. Um, that makes sense? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, as we move here, we'll take a look at this. So this is a, it's called a top chain damper system. So in your fireplace, a lot of times you'll notice you have to reach under and you got to pull that little thing handle down, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a flap in there, it's called a damper, and it opens up to allow the uh, smoke and whatnot from mm -hmm. when you light your fire in your log to go up the fireplace. So now what happens over time is that that piece gets corroded, oxidized, doesn't work, and now what? Two options. You pay more to heat your house because you have a cavity allowing your heat to escape your home, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Because there's nothing to block that heat and keep it in the room. It's just gonna go right up and out the chimney. So that's an issue for some people. Other times, you'll also have a very cold downdraft right okay. on the fireplaces you'll walk past them it's all cold in that area yeah. right and people don't like that either so what you do to combat when you have a broken damper on the bottom is you install a top chain damper and so this damper it flaps down and back up and you'll have this little string here at the base of the fireplace and you'll see in some fireplace you have like that little ring that you can pull down and it yep. goes loose and then you pull it back down and it's shut. They have a top chain damper. Mm -hmm. So a chimney cap, let's say you want to like put just a chimney cap on top of your chimney. You go outside, you look up, oh, I don't have a chimney cap. I should probably get one so no squirrels or anything get in there. Yeah. Probably gonna run you anywhere between 100 bucks, 150 bucks, right? Okay. If you have a problem with your fireplace and your damper system's broken and you need a new damper system, a top chain damper like this system here will go anywhere between 275 and 375 right okay depending on they also have other types of dampers that um, they look like a, a chimney cap mm -hmm. and they actually 
uh, compress down and pop up. Okay. That makes sense? This one is a lever that goes like this yeah. and then shuts. They have other ones that come up and down. Okay. Okay. So that's, there's two different types. We really like this kind because when it's up and down, up and down, um, sometimes they get stuck because we're in Jersey, it's winter time, etc. These tend to give us less issues. So as we move down here, we're gonna take a look here at the cement collar. This is the number one thing most chimneys have an issue with, seriously. Yeah. And the reason for that is because that's its job. Its job is to take the wear and tear of all of that acidic rain, of all the you know storms that you have. If this piece weren't here, then you would simply just have a flat area right mm -hmm. for water to collect for ice to collect and we know what happens then the ice gets in water gets into the small holes it freezes expands and it starts to break the chimney apart literally from the top down once these cement collars go so when you are looking up and you see on the chimney that it's starting to crack it's starting to do this it's starting to deteriorate fix it don't neglect it yeah it's a $200 repair. Make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and if you're a contractor in the industry, go get a bag of cement. Right? Yeah. yeah. Streamline Makes yourself. Sense. Makes a lot of sense. Fix it. Because this is your number one fighter against deteriorating your mortar joints on your chimney. And once that starts to go, I mean, I've been on plenty of chimneys. You get up there, you go to clean the chimney flue, and you could just take these right off. You could just take it off. Wow. And then, I see. Yeah. I'm sure you have. Yeah. So, very, very important. Save yourself thousands of dollars by doing this small repair, okay? Um, as we run down, you'll notice this is a stainless steel chimney lining system. Yeah. So, when we were talking about um, the straw analogy, yes. you have a brand new straw, you put the straw in the drink, you get a good suction. That's when you have good mortar joints like this, right? Mm -hmm. Put it in, it's a sealed, you get a good suction. After time, these mortar joints start to decompose and it becomes little holes in them because all of the oil that sits on the ledges and then the hot water heater produces condensation. It leaves a vapor on, vapor on the walls and then that vapor mixes with the soot, leftover residue becomes acidic and then eats away at this cement mortar, turning it back to sand. So then you have a situation where, let's say if you bang the straw too hard on the table, you put it back in the drink, you're not gonna get a good suction because these are gonna have little holes through them and it's gonna be breaking down the ability for the chimney to draft. So then you're going to have to install something that looks like this. Right. And what this does, this is, there's two types of, well, there's more than two types, but the two main types of lining systems are aluminum or stainless steel. Now, there's a big difference, but not a big price difference. Aluminum is rated for gas only. Okay. Okay. So if you are a contractor and you're really tight on your margins on the butt on the job, you're probably going to want to go with something that's aluminum. Now, how strong is aluminum? Not the strongest. I don't suggest aluminum, mm -hmm. but obviously if your back's against the wall, it's gas rated, right? And you're not holding the property long term. I get that. And I'm just being real because that's the point here. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you, you're on a budget, you're probably gonna opt for something that fits along your budget. Now, you own the property, it's your home, you love it, don't put the aluminum in. Even if you do have gas, spend the extra 300 bucks, 400 bucks, get the stainless steel, yeah. okay? Aluminum, you step on it, and it's not gonna hold my weight. It's gonna crush under my feet. The stainless steel, you can step on it, it's gonna hold your weight. And the life expectancy of a stainless steel versus an aluminum is more than double. Wow, wow, big difference. Big, big difference. 
small margin in, in, in the difference of the pricing. Three, four hundred bucks. And I tell you that because if you are looking to go do an aluminum lining system, give us a ring. Let's work out something to get you a stainless steel and still hit your margins. Yeah. Aluminums are really going anywhere between 1400, 1500. Stainless steel, 1900, 1800. Okay. Now, depending on the job, what you have to do, of course, prices vary, the sizing, etc. Mm -hmm. But if you're looking for a general kind of area where you should be, right. that's where you should be on a normal job. If they're breaking out the flues, if the BTU count is, you know, uh, bigger than, you know, then that can get put in here. So put it, put it, think of it like this. Uh, this here is a six inch lining system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now a six inch fits inside of an eight inch hole. Sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But the eight inch hole is seven inches on the inside. Got it. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. So because this, uh, of this space here. Yeah. So a six inch will fit snug. But what happens when you got to go to a seven? What happens when you got to go higher than that? Yeah. You got to break out the terracotta flues. Okay. Okay. That gets into a different type of scale of a job. Sure. All right. So a lot of times that'll happen when, uh, let's say, let's say uh, you have an older home, right? Mm -hmm. You have a large unit taking care of three, three yes. different apartments, right? Yeah. Units. But what's your problem? It's not separated. You got to deal with the, you know, the tenants, the snack, who's going to pay for what. It's a nightmare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you want to separate the units, of course. Right. What happens when you do that? Well, you got a hot water heater and a furnace for this guy. You got a hot water heater and a furnace for this guy. You got a hot water heater and a furnace for this guy. And now you're getting three, four different units going into this chimney. Right. And then by code, according to the BTUs, now you're over capacity. So what do you got to do? Break the flu. You got to break the flu sometimes. Yeah. Now there's another unit, another lining system. Just this is a good tip to understand. When you get in that situation, Right, because you will have a lapse in BTU and the inspectors are gonna say, hey, look, you have to be at this size, else figure something else out, direct vent, and mm -hmm. go up the side of the house right. where you can fit the, the size of the pipe that you need. Yeah. They don't care. They're worried about your health and safety, not what looks good, right. not what's aesthetic, <laughs> right? Yeah. No, he's like, no, bust a hole through the side of the wall, go up the side of the house with the bead vent. Yeah. That'll fi yeah. fix your problem. Mm -hmm. Or go high efficiency and you know, PVC vent. Right, mm -hmm. one of the two. Yeah. So now, how do we help our clients that aren't gonna go that route, right? Because we wanna keep the cost as low as possible. Sure. We wanna keep mm -hmm. the evasiveness as minimal as possible. We don't wanna disturb a whole lot of things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's what's called a smooth wall lining system. So you see how this lining system's corrugated? Yes, yes. All right, so it has little divots in it. Yeah. Now those divots, slow down and spin the gas up the lining. Mm. Oh. Makes sense? So when that gas goes in, it hits the corrugation and it spins, it allows it to like turbo jet and, 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 and draft up, which is great. However, those bridges at a six inch carry a certain amount of BTUs and can't go over that because the residency time in the chamber is too long. So the material and the metal is not rated for the exposure to be that long on its surface. So that presents an issue, right? Mm -hmm. The only way around that issue is to install something called a smooth wall lining system. So a smooth wall lining system will get you anywhere between 25, 30% more BTU coverage at the same diameter. Oh, wow. So if you're right there, if you're right there, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you you're, you're right there, and and, and you just need a, 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 a little you know more. a little more twenty thousand BTUs more or something like that. You can go ahead and opt for an upgraded lining system that's smooth wall, and you don't have to go through those other hoops and ladders to have your system back up to par. Yeah, makes sense.
Yeah. Right. So, um, yeah. Well, what else can we talk about? I, Chimney flashing. <laughs> yeah. Chimney flashing's not on here, but the second most common problem that I see in chimneys, besides this and a cap, is the chimney flashing. Which would be which would be on down, the bottom. Right. So you have the chimney meets the roof line, right? And on that roof line. Uh, a lot of times the chimney will either come up the side of the house or it'll come through the house. So where the chimney is, is technically a hole in the roof, right? Yes. yes. So we, so there's a separation between where the roofing decks end, where the chimney bricks flow through. There's a small space. So that small space is where your chimney flashing lives. And your chimney flashing is what prevents leaks coming in from your home. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you'll go to a property, you'll see they'll have a leak and they're like, I don't know where it's coming from. The roof is good. This, let's take a look. Sure enough, it's right by the chimney. It's right by the chimney flashing. You got to seal the chimney flashing and it costs you anywhere 275 to 475, depending on how big, how, you know, many layers, what they actually have to do with the flashing. Sometimes you got to, you know, Resecure it. Sometimes you have to replace it, etc. So, yeah. definitely two of the most common, you know, issues that happen with chimneys. Great. Okay. Well, thank you. That was <laughs> definitely very educational. Lot, so. Thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate You're welcome, it. guys. And I'm happy to do it for you. I've been following your guys' stuff, and I'm a huge fan of you guys. So Same here. I Same. support. Thank you. Same right. here. Thank Hope you. you got some value, guys. Yeah, guys. Thank you very much. Take Thanks care. for watching. As always, you know. Uh, like, subscribe, share, share it. Thank you. Thank you.